when the eloquence of an obstructed meaning. For example, it seems to be meaningless at first, but after the Buddha explains this drama, the meanings explained seem to be infinite. 2. The unobstructed eloquence of drama. First, there was just one kind of drama, but the Buddha can bring out infinite dramas from one kind of drama. Infinite dramas are then induced into one kind of drama. One source disperses to become myriad differences, but those myriad differences still return to the, to the one. One thing can turn into myriad things, while the myriad dramas can turn into one. One is infinite, and infinite is one. The eloquence of unobstructed phrasing. Phrasing is the use of language. Some describe something in a matter of a few lines. The Buddha can explain a certain principle endlessly, like the lapping ocean waves. For the eloquence of unobstructed delight in speaking. Delight in speaking means enjoying lecture on the sutras and speaking the drama. They enjoy teaching beings by speaking the drama. They are delighted once they start speaking the drama. This is the fourth eloquence of unobstructed delight in speaking. The eight types of sounds. We talked about the four types of eloquences often, but never the eight types of sounds. Also, we have never talked about them before. Cultivators who worked hard know. The Buddha speaks Dharma with eight types of sounds. First, the Buddha's sound is the, fi is the finest sound. To enjoy the sound of the Buddha, the more you hear, the more you enjoy listening to it. Unlike some people who sound like noisy chainsaws, the Buddha's voice is sonorous and crisp. The second is a gentle voice. The Buddha's voice is as gentle as water flow. The more you listen, the more you feel that this sound is nice. It sounds even better than music. Thirdly, this kind of sound is appropriate just right. This sound is so pleasant that there is nothing more people would like to listen. Fourth, noble and wise. The Buddha's voice is very noble. No need to listen to his words. Just the voice seems to contain infinite wisdom. Fifth, not yin. Some people's speaking voice are yin. Women, for example, speak in a sugary voice. The Buddha's voice is not yin. Sixth, it is not facious. Even when he is telling a joke, the listeners will find it very correct instead of banter. Seventh is deep and distant. Listen to the Buddha's voice. You do not know how deep it is or how far away you may hear it. Venerable Mahamagalyayana used his spiritual powers to go eastward past the infinite number of Buddha lands. He was searching for the Buddha's voice, trying to find out where the Buddha's voice could no longer be heard. He went to infinite number of lands, and yet the Buddha's voice seemed to be by his ear still. With his magnificent spiritual powers, you cannot find a place where the Buddha's voice could not be heard. This is deep and distant. If inexhaustible, this voice is unceasing. The Buddha's speaking voice is consecutive and continuous. The Buddha spoke the drama with eight types of voice. Some people will only hear one, two, three, four, or five characteristics out of these eight types. Sometimes each person hears one trait. You find the voice deep and distant, while someone else finds it tender. People are different, so they hear different things. These eight kinds of sounds are subtle and wonderful sounds. Remember these eight types of sounds so you can emulate them as you speak the Dharma. So the great assembly of gods, dragons, the rest of the Eightfold Division, all those assembled at the Chajachim Shaheven. The Eightfold Division consists of gods, dragons, yakshas, gandavas, asuras, Kinaras, Maharagas, Garudas, 
humans, non-humans, and others. Listen to me today in the palace of the Chajashim Shaheven as I praise Earth Star Bodhisattva, telling of his beneficial deeds of inconceivable events of the matter of his transcendence to sagehood. We talked about the causes that lead to sagehood earlier, such as listening to the sutras, meditating and studying the Buddha Dharma. Transcend means to take half the time. For instance, you were supposed to meditate for a year before you become enlightened. Ah, it ended up that you became enlightened in two ways, really fast. These are the causes for transcendence of the circumstances of his certification to the tenth ground, the fruition of bodhisattvas, the ten dwellings, ten practices, and ten transferences are called the three sets of worthy positions. The resulting positions of the ten levels of bodhisattvas. One ground of happiness. They are very happy all the time. They do not ever cry at this state of bodhisattvas. They do not cry whether you beat them or scold them. They are happy regardless. They are happy when criticized or scolded. They are happy no matter what. This is the first ground. Two, ground of living filth. Living faith is to part with the dramas of defilement becoming pure. Because of happiness, they leave behind defilement. When they do, they emit a light. 3. Ground of emitting light. There is no light where there is defilement. Part of part with defilement and there is light. What is defilement? Your impure thoughts are all about desire that make yourself greedy for comfort. Desires, especially sexual desire, make them defilements. Before reaching the level of living defilement, there is no releasing of light. Once defilement is left behind, the light is emitted. For ground of blazing wisdom, the blazing wisdom ground produces wisdom. Wisdom is like fire that burns with a bright flame. This wisdom is like flames. Since you are releasing light, you have wisdom. So the fourth is the ground of blazing wisdom. Five, ground of difficult, of difficult to overcome. Nothing can defeat him. His wisdom manifests regardless of who is arguing with him. No spiritual powers of transformations can defeat him. This is the ground of difficult to overcome. This is the ground of manifestation. What is manifest? What manifests on the light of wisdom appears. Seven, ground of distant travels. Traveling for a long distance, traveling afar. Eight, ground of unmovingness. The earth is unmoving, the ground of unmovingness. Unmoving is the body mind and yet transforming living beings throughout the ten directions. Although he transforms and saves living beings throughout the ten directions, but he remains unmoved. Although not moving, he can teach and transform all beings. 9. Ground of good wisdom. Good at having wisdom. 10. Ground of Dharma clouds. This kind of drama is like clouds. The above had been explained briefly according to the meaning of the words, but to explain them in detail, there are many more meanings. If we wish to know in detail the three worthies and the ten sages, the ten grounds, we shall study the Suragama Sutra. The Suragama Sutra explains the ten dwellings, ten practices, ten transferences, and ten grounds. They are all uh, explained clearly. Look at the Suragama Sutra and you will know in more detail. Certifying to the tenth ground here refers to the matter of earth star bodhisattva, certifying to the tenth ground. And of the situation leading to his becoming irreversible from Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. Ultimately, irreversibility is of many kinds. 1. Irreversible in position, not withdrawing from the three vehicles. 2. Irreversible in practice, not withdrawing from being ordinary people. 3. Irreversible in thought, 
not withdrawing from being bodhisattvas, not who always practice the Mahayana Dharma. These three irreversibilities refer to the irreversibility of position, practice, and thought. These three irreversibilities refer to not retreating from Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi is Sanskrit, which means unsurpassed, proper, equal, and right enlightenment. The enlightenment of those of the two vehicles is different than ordinary people. Although he is enlightened, he has not yet reached proper and equal enlightenment. What is proper and equal? Proper and equal enlightenment is, is for the Bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas are probably equal to Buddhas. Although they are probably equal to Buddhas and they are different than those of the two vehicles, they have not yet attained the unsurpassed. Only the Buddhas have reached the unsurpassed, proper, equal, and right enlightenment. Unsurpassed enlightenment is different than that of the Bodhisattvas. This is why the Buddha's resultant position is called unsurpassed, proper, equal, and right enlightenment. Now, although Earth Star King Bodhisattvas has not realized Buddhahood yet, his resultant position is the same as the Buddha. This is why the Buddha described the causes and conditions that led to the Bodhisattvas unsurpassed, proper, equal, and right enlightenment. After he said that the Bodhisattva Mahasattva named the contemplator of the one house rose from his seat in the assembly, knelt, and with palms together said to the Buddha, World honored one, Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva is replete with great compassion and pities beings who are suffering for their offenses. In thousands of billions of worlds, he manifests thousands of billions of transformation bodies through the strength of his meritorious virtue and inconceivable awesome spiritual power. I have heard the world honored one and the numberless Buddhas of the ten directions praise Earth Star Bodhisattva in unison, saying that even if all the Buddhas of the past, present, and future were to speak of his meritorious qualities, they could never finish describing them. Upon hearing the world honored one tell the great assembly that he now wants to praise Earth Star Bodhisattva's beneficial deeds and so forth, and beseeching the world honored one to praise the inconceivable events pertaining to Earth Star Bodhisattva for the sake of beings of the present and future, and to cause the gods, dragons, and the rest of the Eightfold Division to gaze at him in worship and obtain blessings. Commentary After he, Shakyamuni Buddha, said that a Bodhisattva in the Dharma Assembly who is not an average Bodhisattva, but a great Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva named Contemplator of the World's South. Contemplator is the wisdom that observes why the world sounds and understands contemplated. Due to his compassion and wisdom, he searches out and contemplates the sounds of pain made by beings throughout the worlds of the ten directions. A Bodhisattva then rose from his seat in the assembly, knelt on his right knee, and with palms together said to the Buddha, World Honored One, Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva is replete with great compassion and pities beings who are suffering for their offenses. In thousands of billions of worlds, he manifests thousands of billions of transformation bodies through the strength of his meritorious virtue and inconceivable awesome spiritual power. I have heard Quan Shi in Bodhisattva says, I hear the world honored one and the numberless Buddhas of the ten directions praise Earth Star Bodhisattva in unison. With different mouths, they say the same things in one unified voice. All Buddhas throughout the ten directions praise Earth Star Bodhisattva in unison.